You're listening to The Credit Pros on Real Estate Radio New Jersey with local credit experts Damon DiCrescenzo and attorney Jason Kaplan. Now, here's Jason and Damon. I'm Jason here with Damon DiCrescenzo. We're The Credit Pros on Real Estate Radio Network Sunday mornings. Um, welcome back to our third segment. we got a lot of exciting stuff coming up. Um, Damon, why don't you tell them what's coming? Well, you know, I'm really excited to talk about uh, something that's going to save you a lot of money. And I think that that's why you listen to our show, because you want to learn about credit. You want to learn about ways to be able to keep more money in your pocket. And we, there's a lot of times we talk about what they don't want you to know. This week is an exciting one. Now, time for what they don't want you to know. What they don't want you to know. What the collection agencies don't want you to know is that they run on month cycles. This is a little bit of a tip for you, my friends. You're going to make some money with this, or at least you're going to keep some of your money. If you get a call from a collection agency in the beginning of the month, and you're thinking about paying them, don't. My suggestion to you is to wait until the end of the month, because just like a a car dealership, yeah? A car dealership waits, uh, uh, they have their big push at the end of the month because they all look at their numbers month over month. Collection agencies are exactly the same thing. So if you have a collection agency that's calling you and says uh, in in week one, well, I want 50% of this debt, or like our Indian friends say, I'll, I'll kill you. <laughs> uh, I want 50% of this debt. By the end of the month, they'll be willing to take 10% of the debt. Or at least somewhere close to it. Yeah, it's a little bit of an exaggeration, but 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 even so, when when I settle debt for clients, I'll give a phone call, an initial call, and I don't care when the initial call is, whether it's the beginning of a month or whether it's the end of one month, but I'll never agree to what they say, and I'll wait till the following end of the month because most of the time, nine and ten times, they're going to call me, <laughs> and they're going to offer something. So now you have a negotiation going because now they've offered you something and you can counter. It's not you offering to them and they have all the control because they start calling you up again. They don't want you to know that. Believe me, they don't want you to know that you have any kind of leverage in your pocket. Don't mention it to them. Don't tip your hand. Don't tell them that you know they work on a monthly uh, type of quota system. And, and and the other the other thing to know when you're negotiating with them is it goes in tiers. So obviously they want you to pay the entire amount in a lump sum, and then they want you to pay part of it in a lump sum, and then the rest over payments over time. And then they're willing to accept um, a lump sum for less money with payments, and then a lump sum only, and then a payment plan. It goes down. So you can use the form and the method that you're also paying that settlement with as a negotiation tactic to do a lot better and get a better deal. Now you know. Now you know what they don't want you to know. Uh, If you have questions about that, if you have questions about settling some of your debt, why don't you give Jason a call on our off-air line at 973-771-5118. Again, 973-771-5118 on the web at creditrepair.to. I want to bring it back. For those of you that are just joining us, we're very fortunate to have in the office, in the office, in the studio with us today, Aaron from Equity One, and Aaron's a a licensed real estate agent in the state of New Jersey and an expert and a whiz kid, if you will. I just wanted to take a second. Aaron, tell me about Equity One because I think they're doing some inventive, uh, interesting things in our market space to try to help the consumer and try to help you, the listener, make more money. Absolutely. Equity One uh, is a company that has a number of branch companies. One of the companies is uh, Equity One Rehab, which buys properties, rehabs them, and resells them. They also have Equity One Real Estate, which trades uh, properties similar to a real estate brokerage. And then we have a financial company as well that invests in income properties and a development company as well that will develop um, whole neighborhoods and, and areas as well of raw land into buildings. I like that, that a company uh, has a wide scope of services that they can offer uh, because it shows that, that they're thinking uh, in a lot of different areas about opportunities and particularly about opportunities for their clients. I think that's wonderful. It shows they're proactive. You don't want to be a dinosaur in anything, in any industry. Exactly you right. You want to peg yourself. That's right. You want to go and get it. It's credit, true or false. 
Uh, okay, so thank you for that. I think that it's time for us to do Credit True or False. I loved Credit True or False. Right. And uh, and we have a couple of, of Credit True or False questions this week that seem to be coming up again and again and again from our clients that are calling. Uh, and, and, you know, we field a lot of questions every day. This one I thought was interesting, so I decided to turn it into a Credit True or False. And Aaron, I'm going to throw this to you. Here we go. FICO scores are locked in for six months, and they change every six months and only every six months. True or false? That is false. Credit scores are dynamic. Very good. Jason, please. Well, well you know, they, they, they change all the time. There's a credit report is all the information on it. And likewise, all that information changes when new things report, when balances change, when accounts are opened or closed, when collections are reported or late payments are made. Because all that information is always changing, the ancillary product, which is the credit score, is always word. changing. Ancillary? Yeah. Um, That's a, what is it? It's a, it's a, ancillary, a, a compliment. word, a Scrabble word? Uh, if you got that in Scrabble, you'd win the game. Um, I don't think there's enough letters uh, on the board. But, you know, uh, the credit score is just a complementary product that basically defines the information. It's a, it, it's a quick definition of what someone's information is. So here's how this pertains to you, Joe Listener. If you're listening to this and you think that you have a 712 credit score because you were down at the car dealership two months ago and they told you you have a 712 credit score, you probably don't have a 712 credit score anymore. Not saying you have any worse or not saying you have any better, but it changes real time. Based on the information that's there. Your car broke down. You had to charge for a new uh, radiator. You maxed out your credit card. Score went down. Mm -hmm. You opened up a new account. Your score went up. Things change all the time. That's right. And uh, if you're not completely aware of it, then um, you're uninformed. And if you're going to apply for credit, you're going to pay a consequence. What's the quick solution to that? Get some credit monitoring. Uh, we don't endorse any one specific credit monitoring program. We just endorse it as a whole. Go out there, sign up to a credit monitoring program, and find out what your credit score is. It's nothing that you have to have. Okay, Most of the credit monitoring services are owned by the credit bureaus anyway as a way to make money off of people. But if you're thinking about buying something and you're a little concerned about the information that might be on the report then it's a nice way just to check your credit before you actually have to go and use your credit. That is good information, and everyone should have credit monitoring. You have to know what is on your credit, and if you don't, it's your own fault if you get stuck. Uh, if you want to find out more information about a credit monitoring program, Jason will give you one on the phone. Pick up the phone and give us a ring, 973 973- Seven seven one five one one eight again nine seven three seven seven one five one one eight or on the web creditrepair.to. Let's dive into our next myth, uh, Jason. How about I throw this one to you? Okay. I don't need to check my credit report because I pay all my bills on time. That's going to be false, and it's going to be false because everyone makes mistakes. If you want to look at it in the in in the light best best suited to make you feel good about yourself. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is things get paid late. Things get misreported. The debts that you thought you paid or that you forgot about get resold to a new company and get replaced That's back right. on the credit so, report. Thinking about this, this is the most important one to me, right? Because, you know, I may even be guilty of it sometimes too. But I remind, I'm reminded of my mom, right? When you were a kid, you were driving and uh, mom used to say, be careful where you're going. I used to say, Mom, I'm careful. And she used to say, well, it's not you I'm worried about. It's the other person I'm worried about. It's the other guy that I'm worried about. And that applies here. I pay my bills on time every month. How do I know that they're reporting it correctly? 79% of credit reports in the United States contain major errors. I have to assume that I'm one of those 79, uh, in that 79 percentile. And Damon, I, Damon doesn't have this problem because his last name is D. Crescenzo, and I don't think there's any other Damon D. Crescenzos in the world, much less New York. But my name's Jason Kaplan. There are actually surprisingly a lot of Jason Kaplans out there. Shock, shocking, right? <laughs> so what happens is 
how do I know that some company didn't accidentally place Jason Kaplan's file on my file? So I might pay my bills on time. I might be a responsible party, but that other Jason Kaplan might not be such a responsible individual. And that's where it somewhat comes to get you. That's right. You need to be aware of it. Uh, and, and you need to watch the store, as they say. Uh, we're going to talk about our last true or false question. And I think that we go through this a lot. And, and this is something that really freaks people out. And, and the credit bureaus don't do a great job of, of clearing this up. And I think there's a lot of misconceptions about it. But here it is. Checking my own credit report harms my credit standing. What do you think? That is, I'm sorry, repeat the question. Was it affects or doesn't buddy. affect? No, but attention. it was a fact or it doesn't affect. Checking my own credit report harms my credit standing. Effect wasn't even in there. So uh, let's let me say it again. <laughs> that is, that is, it doesn't, it doesn't harm your credit. This so doesn't that is harm true. your credit. That's true. Right. Okay. Well, it no, it's, it's not true because the way I phrased it, it'd be so much better if you paid attention to me Why don't you just put a double negative talking? in that thing? It's so complicated of a question. All right. So here we go. Checking my own credit harms my credit standing. False. Because checking your own credit does not harm your credit standing. Applying for new credit affects your credit standing. It negatively affects your credit score, whether it be a literal or a lot. And we talk about that a lot, and it's a whole different ball of wax. Checking your credit report, checking your credit score through a credit monitoring program or free at annualcreditreport.com. No Which affiliation. doesn't give you your score. Does not hurt your credit. You're encouraged by the federal government to be aware of the information that's reporting on your credit report. That's why they created annualcreditreport.com to force the credit bureaus to show you this information once per year, absolutely for free. There are a lot of other websites that will charge you for it, but even those other websites, for example, freecreditreport.com, which is not free, but they will show you your information and you will not be penalized. It may show up as an inquiry. It is called a soft inquiry in our business. Mm -hmm. You, the consumer, you need to understand that you have a right to this information. It's your information. You need to know what's on there. And so going around and checking your credit score at these places doesn't hurt you. This does not mean that you can go to Bloomingdale's and then you can go to Macy's and then you can uh, go apply for a car and then call them up and say, well, the credit pros told me I could do this and it wasn't going to hurt my credit score. No, it's only if you check your credit on monitoring services at annualcreditreport.com. But anytime a third party pulls your credit, it's considered a hard inquiry. We've spoken about it before. It can have a negative effect on your credit report, but the negative effect is very minimal for a variety of reasons. I wouldn't be too concerned about it, but the idea is you can check your credit, no effect whatsoever. And the idea is you should check your credit. You should know what's going on on your credit report. And if you pull your credit report and you see that there are problems on it, or you want to talk about it, you're not sure of the information that's showing up, then I suggest that you call us because we're happy to go over that with you. And we're not going to charge you. I'm happy to have that conversation about what's on your credit, and we can talk as friends. Pick up the phone and give us a call on our off-air line at 973-771-5118, 973-771-5118, or book some time with us on the web at creditrepair.to. A couple of small things I want to talk to. Uh, we, we got a couple of emails while we've been sitting here, and I want to address them uh, because I think that they bring up some good questions that we get a lot. Um, Jason here, this is from John D. in Middletown in New Jersey. You addressed it a little bit earlier, but I, I want you to reiterate it because I really do think that it's important and valuable information for our listeners. What's the best way to get a collection agency to stop calling me at home and at work? A cease and desist letter, which you would put on your letterhead when they call you one time. You just talk to them nicely for the first time. I'm sorry, I don't think I can pay the debt. What is your name? What is your address? What is your account number? And you put a letter with all that information on it and say, Dear Mr. and Mrs. Collection Company, I do not wish to be contacted over the phone anymore. You can contact me in writing or you can't contact me at all, whichever way you want to go with it. And guess what? This letter doesn't need to be fancy. 
You don't need to sound like a lawyer to write this letter. That's all the information you have to have. Exactly what I said. I don't want to be contacted by your company anymore. Please take me off the list. I do not want to be called. And I would usually send it certified mail only because when they call you a week or so later, start recording the calls and start keeping them because now they violated the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act and there are statutory penalties of $1,000 per violation as well as attorney's fees if need be. So you can use that not only to get money off them, but also have them just forgive you of the debt that they're calling about. And I can tell you from personal experience, there is absolutely nothing more satisfying than having a collection agency write you a check. Damn, that feels good. Not even that. I, and I, I giggle every single day and Damon laughs at me, but every single time I get a, a, a settlement for less offer from a collection company with an agreement to delete or an apology letter for a violation with a check in it, I get so happy, even if it's a $200 debt being deleted, it really gets me excited because that's what we do. That's basically, that's the, that is the position I have taken in life, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I am the credit professional. I will not be a firefighter. I'm not going to be a football player. For the rest of my life, I'm going to be the lawyer that helps people with their collections and beats the credit bureau. So when I win, good. it makes my day. We have one more question before we get out of here. Jennifer from Staten Island. Go Staten Island. Uh, and Aaron, I'm going to throw this one to you, buddy. Bring it on. I'm thinking about buying a short sale. Do I still need good credit to qualify? Yes, you do. You'll need at least a 580 credit score to qualify for a mortgage. It's really no different than buying a regular home. Uh, same type of mortgage, FHA, conventional, doesn't matter. I think that that's important information because uh, there are misconceptions that people have uh, thinking that uh, buying a short sale, you still don't need to qualify for a loan. Guess what? You still need to qualify for a loan, so you need to make sure that your documents are in order. You're working with a qualified and, and experienced mortgage professional. Uh, and you uh, know full well what you're going into in regards to your credit. That's really important information. If you don't have a mortgage professional, I suggest that you give us a call. I'm happy to put you in touch with a wonderful one, either in New York or New Jersey. We work with some fantastic people. Uh, anyway, it's come to the end of our show. And again, I want to take a second of thanking you, the listener, for taking a time out of your day to spend a few minutes with us. It really means a lot to us and hope that you get some great information from us. And again, I want to thank Aaron with Equity One. If you're thinking about buying a home, if you're thinking about selling a home anywhere in New Jersey, the best time to do it is today. Interest rates have never been lower and Aaron's the man to work with. His number is 908-625-0264. Again, 908-625-0264. Thanks again for listening to the Credit Pros on Real Estate Radio Network. Call us on our fair line. We would love to speak with you about any of your credit problems, credit issues, and we'll give you some credit solutions. Our number is 973-771-5118, 973-771-5118, or on the web at creditrepair.to. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, New Jersey. We'll see you next week, all right? For all your credit problems, concerns, or questions, call the show's off-air number at 973-771-5118 and speak to the hosts of the show, Damon DiCrescenzo and attorney Jason Kaplan, directly, 973-771-5118. This program is brought to you by the Real Estate Radio Network. Visit realestateradio.us for more info. That's realestateradio.us. Hello, Jason Kaplan here, host of The Credit Pros on Real Estate Radio New Jersey. I'm thrilled that I get to speak to you every week and bring you the truths about your credit. A lot of stuff you hear in the news is just flat out wrong. If you want the inside knowledge about what's going on with your credit, that's what I'm here for. Give me a call at 973-771-5118. That's 973-771-5118. Whether you're looking to buy a home, get a job, apply for car insurance, your credit's the most important factor in these decisions. I can help you make an educated decision about what's going on and what's best for you and your family. It's easy. I give you the real facts and you decide what to do from there. Just give me a call. I'm here to help. 973-771-5118. That's 973-771-5118. Or visit us online at 
creditrepair.to. For all your credit problems, concerns, or questions, call the show's off-air number at 973-771-5118 and speak to the hosts of the show, Damon DeCrescenzo and attorney Jason Kaplan, directly, 973-771-5118. The preceding program was paid for by Real Estate Radio Network. The hosts are not an employee of WMTR or its parent company, Greater Media. The views and opinions expressed on the credit pros on Real Estate Radio New Jersey are not necessarily those of the staff and management of WMTR. Station management has not investigated the claims made in financial service spots that may air during this program. As always, it is advisable to consult a professional before making a major financial decision.